Welcome back everyone. For this video, we're going to go through a grade two past paper. Welcome back, my amazing learners. For this video, we're going to continue going through the diagnostic test that was done by grade two students in September, 2020. Now, even though it says grade two, grade one students should be able to do this one too because of how the diagnostic test was structured. All right, so the Ministry of Education created this to find out exactly what areas of the grade one curriculum that current grade two set of students really understood. So this is for you. Stay tuned. Question one of this mathematics paper says, which picture shows a set of 12 bananas? So the child needs to carefully count each set. All right. And when you count it now, you will find out that set B is the answer. Question two, how many apples can be seen in the basket? Now, I really wish um, parents that the ministry had used a um, not a filled out clip art, but like a line drawing of apples to make sure that the children can see. All right. Now, the very important part of the question here says in the basket. So the answer is um, six or is it five? It's what I'm telling you. It's very hard to see. Okay. So if the child counts the one that is outside of the basket, then you can see that the child doesn't understand the question. All right. So look carefully at the picture there. Count the, bat, count the apples that are in, in the basket to get the answer. Question three is in two parts. So you have to really pay attention. So question three says, count the number of stars in the box below. One, two, three, four. Now, which set has a fewer number of stars than the stars in the box? So this is now to see if the child is really paying attention to less than, more than. So when they count A, option A, one, two, three stars, that's less. Now the quicker students will just circle that as the answer and move on. But if you're a parent checking to see if the child is really understanding, you need to go through option B and see with them to hear their reasoning and to hear what they really understand. So option B has four stars, which is the same number as what is in the box, not less. One, two, three, four. Option C has five stars, which is more. All right. So if your child chooses option B or C, you really have to find out why they chose that answer to help you understand now if your child is getting the concept of less than, not just counting, but the whole less than, greater than thing. Let's go to question four, which represents the numeral eight. This one should be very easy for all grade one and two students. Option A is six. Option B eight option c nine so the answer is b eight the numeral eight this is what it looks like written down question five which set represents half of ten now if your child doesn't just look and pick up that option b is the answer one two three four five then you can probably ask the child to hold up their fingers count their fingers one to ten take away half which is five make the concept more concrete for them and they might um, understand it a little bit better that way. Question six, what is the place value of the underlined digit in the numeral 56? So the six is underlined and the child should know by now that once you start from the right hand side, ones, tens, hundreds, and so on. So the six, the value, ones so the answer would be option c question seven what is the number 18 written in words by now children should be counting from even one to a hundred so they should know that the one and the eight when they're together it's 18 e-i-g-h-t-e-e-n it is not one eight it is not 81 is not eight one or anything like that. The one and the eight together make 18. 
all right question eight look at the look at the pattern below two four six eight so we have skip counting by two so the next number must be ten because we're skip counting by two two four six eight who do we appreciate 10 12 14 16 all those little things all right one two buckle my shoe three four shut the door a lot of children should be learning that from um basic school and nursery or preschool as the case may be let's look at question nine there are five children in a line one of them is holding a star what is the position of the child holding the star so we see our pointing to the first child so the next in line must be second all right you can make it more real life remind them when they are lining up at school or when they are racing who is coming first second third you can tie it in with the olympics look at the people racing and competing and saying who come first who come second and all of that so that children get to know their ordinal numbers and then question 10 which of the following is true here we have the less than and the um the lesser than and the greater than sign and you know that where the wide open mouth is remember the story of ali alligator where the wide open mouth is is where the larger number is the greater number is so we know that option a would be the answer because it says six is less than 16. okay you can always um give them some real life examples allow them to try drawing it doing different combinations but by knowing grade one the child should have a concept of greater than and less than and know the symbol and how to use it properly question 11 arrange the numbers below from the smallest to the largest number so we have 46 43 44 um 45 and then 44 so we're going to start with the smallest number so all of them start with a four. So you have to look on the second digit now in the ones column, the smallest one. So 43 would be smallest. Then we have 44, then 45, then 46 would be the largest number. Then now you look at the different options and you see that option B is the one that has them in order from smallest to largest. Question 12. Mark has 18 toy trucks. Some of the trucks are broken. Some, you notice that no number is given. So is reasoning ability now. Which could be the number of toy trucks that are not broken? It can't be 21 because Mark only has 18 toy trucks. All right. Let us look now. It can't be 18 because the 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 um it says 18 and some some of them are broken so you can't you can't get back the same number so the most logical number now would be option c 15. question 13 what is the total value of coins shown below so here we have some jamaican money we have the round 20 dollar coin and then we have three 10 dollar coins so 20 10 10 10 that's 50 okay 20 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 equal 50 so we would see you now that the answer would have to be option c 50 dollars um question 14 which number is one more than 25 one more than it can't be 24 because 24 is less than 25 it has to be 26 option b 26 because 25 plus 1 equal 26. question 15 which of the following represents two groups of tens and 14 ones now the quick students now will pick up 14 ones 14 ones so you can get a group of 10 out of that hmm let's look at the illustrations now the pictures or the drawings depending on what word your child is more familiar with option a we have one group of 10 and four ones then option b we have three groups of 10 and four ones and option c we have two groups of tens and four ones so we know that the, the answer is option b 
But let me talk a little bit about why the option option B would be the answer. Because it's not just two groups of 10 here. Remember that you get a group of 10 out of the 14. And that will leave you with four ones. All right? So if your child picks the first one, that means that they are not really understanding. If they pick the, the third option, option C, that means that they probably have partial understanding. And they might not pick up the 14 ones and the fact that you can get a group of 10 out of it. Question 16. Seven green plums and five red plums are in a basket. How many plums are in the basket? So the child has to add now. Seven plus five. Okay? If they can add that in their mind, that is wonderful. And they will get 12. But if the child needs um something concrete, they need a mani manipulative, you might get some bottle covers or even some stones or gravel and let the child count out the seven, count out the five, and then count them all together to add it up. Okay? Let's look at question 17. Which two symbols should replace the box and the triangle to make the number sentence true? So we have three little boats in the oval. Then we have a box in between. Then four little boats. Then a triangle. And then now six boats. So we have to figure out now what is happening in this number sentence. Three blank, four blank six is it is it to be replaced by option c right here or option a saying that um three plus four equal or three plus four is greater than six you have to work out each of them and see which one of them makes mathematical sense all right, and you will see that option C must be the answer because 3 plus 4 is 7 and 7 is greater than 6. So option C is the answer. Then 18, John drew the eight leaves shown below. He shaded some of the leaves. So you can count and see that three are shaded and five are not shaded. Let's go into the question now. John wants to shade one quarter. So the child needs to figure out now what is a quarter of eight. All right. Most of them will pick up right away that a quarter is two. Three leaves are already shaded and a quarter is two. So something is wrong. What should John do? What should he do? A. John should erase the shading from one of the leaves. B, John should shade one more leaf. Or C, John should shade all the leaves. Remember that they want you to keep a quarter shaded here. And a quarter of eight is two. So the answer has to be option A. He should erase the shading from one of the leaves. So you would no longer have three shaded leaves. You would just have two shaded leaves. Two is a quarter of eight. Question 19. Which instrument is used to tell how hot or cold something is? Is it, is it A, a tape measure, B, a thermometer, or C, a scale? So we know the answer is B, a thermometer. All right. So from you see that little um, circle there. And you see the numbers going up and down. They should be able to pick up what a thermometer looks like by now. Question 20. What time is shown on the clock? So we know that the long hand is the minute hand and the short hand is the hour hand. So the short hand is pointing to 3 and the long hand, minute hand, is pointing to 12. So that is 3 o'clock. So the answer is option C. Question 21. Which word best completes the sentence? The I have the drawing of a couch or what some people call a sofa is heavy, but the, I have a drawing of a pillow is blank. So the sofa is heavy, but the pillow is light. All right. It wouldn't be short. 
because you're not comparing height, it wouldn't be thin because you're not comparing people. One is heavy, the other one is light. So you're speaking opposites now, okay? That one should be pretty easy for most of you. Question 22, which object is the same length as the ruler? So we have the ruler, crayon, fork, and a nail, all right? So this, the quick and easy thing for the child to do is to probably use their finger. If they can't just look and figure out the answer with their eyes, you can use your finger now and see this is the size of the, of the ruler. Okay, the crayon is shorter, the fork is taller, but the nail, the nail now is the same length. And that's how they would pick up the answer if they can't just look at it and tell. Let's look at question 23. What is the height of the box? So juice boxes are very common to students at this age. So this is a real life example. All right, something that most of them should understand so here we see illustrated the concept of length and width and height let us see if the child can pick up the height so the arrows that are going up and down that is usually the measurement for height most of the time arrows going up and down children so we see a number beside it 30 cm which means centimeter so the answer would be option c 30 centimeters question 25 which object has the shape of a triangle so we know that a triangle has three sides so the child should remember that try triangle three sides and pick up that the clothes hanger option a is the answer question 25 look at the pictures of the, the picture of the house the square shapes represent the windows of the house so the child should call one two three four five five windows option b but if they count in the rectangle which represents the door then you can pick up that they have some confusion between squares and rectangles and you need to either reteach or reinforce that question 26 which two objects in the table below belong to the set of cylinders so a cylinder has a curved surface and two flat surfaces so they have to look now and remember that they're trying to pick up the two objects not just one so we have a soda can dice or die football a gift and a pencil so the child should look now to see which one of those objects have a curved surface and flat surfaces at the end so we have p sorry p and t because the pencil and the soda can would belong to the set of cylinders and a good thing for you to practice is to probably look around the home um show children like a can of of um baked beans a can of butter beans or some such thing and let them identify that as a cylinder let them look at their their birthday party hat and identify that as a cone look at the ice cream identify that as a cone driving up and down walking up and down on the street and you see the orange cones the traffic cones let them identify it let them look at the traffic um light let them identify the different colors and the shapes and so on related to real life and it will help the knowledge to stick let's look at question 27 look at the cube below one face of the cube is shaded all right which plain shape is shaded on the cube okay so we are dealing with plain shapes and solid shapes here so that plain shape would have to be the square you can even tie it in to the previous question and say um johnny mary keisha sue whatever the child's name is which one of these objects objects is a cube and the child will point out the die or the dice all right, which one of these shapes is a cylinder again? Remember what you answered in the previous question? Tell mommy again or tell daddy again, which is the cylinder and the point on the soda can. What is at home that is like a cylinder? The gas cylinder outside? <laughs> what is like the cylinder? Things like that to help to reinforce the knowledge in our children's brains. 
Question 28. Which number must be added to 14 to make 23? 14 plus, and there's an empty box, equal 23. So many children by that stage will pick up that addition and subtraction are opposites. So if you take away 14 from 23, you will have 9. All right? And they'll just circle that as an answer and move on. Others know, I'm telling you a little bit of how some of the grade 1 and 2 children think. They will look on the numbers and use their common sense or their critical thinking skills. And they'll say, option A is 37. That looked too big. And what they mean by too big is a two-digit number. It looked too big. Um, option B is 11. That plus that will give you that. That looked too big, man. Or they might sit down and add it out on their fingers and so. And then now, by a process of default, they'll pick up that option C is the answer. Meaning that they have basically guessed or eliminated their way to the answer. They don't really understand the mathematical concept behind it. All right? So that is just a reminder for you parents. Sometimes their child will get something right. You need to ask them, how you get that? Why do you think that is the answer? Ask, probe, get to understand their thinking. Because it will lead to less problems later on. Let's look at question 29. Which mathematical mathematical sentence is true? 8 plus 9 equals 16. Hmm? 8 plus 9 is 17. So that can't be true. B, 17 minus 8 equals 9. Yes, that is true. But also look at option C. 17 minus 9 equals 26. You end up with a bigger number. That can't be correct. That is how most of them will pick up. Because when you take away, you usually end up with a smaller number. Once they see the big number, they know that option C cannot be true. Question 30. Look at the pattern below. 3, 6, 9, 12, star, 18, 21, crescent moon. So you are skip counting by 3. So 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 plus 3 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. 21 plus 3 is 24. So the answer would have to be option B. The star is 15 and the crescent moon is 24. Let's look at question 31. Hannah saw the following pattern. Star, circle, star, star, circle, star, circle, blank, blank. Okay, so you look at the pattern, how it starts, and you will try and pick up as it continues. So the next logical Logical part of the pattern must be the double star, option A. Okay, so Carla and her mom bought different types of trees to plant in their community. The graph below shows how many of each type of tree they bought. Use this graph to answer questions 32, 33, and 34. So we have mango trees, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mango trees. Coconut tree, one, two, three. Banana tree. One, two, three, four, five. Question 32. Which type of tree did Carla and her mom buy the most of? The, the answer, of course, would be the mango tree because they bought seven. Question 33. How many more mango trees were bought than coconut trees? So now you have to subtract three from seven equals four so they bought four more mango trees than coconut trees and that is option b question 34 how many different types of trees did carla and her mom buy they bought three types mango coconut and banana use the price list below to answer questions 35 and 36 so we have hot dog 100 dollars donut $70, orange juice, $60, and candy, $30. Question 35, how much does a donut cost? $70, option A, is right there at the top of the list. Question 36, Mike bought two items with $100 and received $10 change. Which two items did Mike buy? So the first thing the child needs to do is to realize that if Mike got back $10 change, that means that he spent 90 
dollars so let's look at the price list to see what two items would come together for 90 dollars it would have to be orange juice and candy because the orange juice is $60 and candy is $30. Question 37. It takes two scoops, sorry, four scoops to fill a glass. It takes two glasses to fill a jar. All right, so four scoops to fill one glass. Another four scoops. And we have two glasses together to fill one jar. All right, so four plus four equal eight. So the, so the answer will be option C, eight. Let's look at question 38. Which container will hold the most water? Is it option C, a cup? Option B, kettle? Or option C, a barrel? Now this one is easy, cheesy, lemon squeezy. Most of our young students, they're familiar with the rainwater barrel, garbage, um, a barrel to call it garbage or even one sent from abroad with lots of goodies inside for children to use. So right away, they will pick up that option C, the barrel will hold the most water. As long as they understand the concept of least and most and equal to, this one is easy for them. Question 39. Look at the picture below. You have a cake on a cake stand and it says equal 2 kg or 2 kilograms. Which of the following weighs more than 2 kilograms? So we have an empty cake stand at option A. We have a two-tier cake on a cake stand for option B. And we have the same thing again as what was in the top picture at option C. I remember the question is asking, which of the following weighs more than 2 kg or 2 kilograms? So it has to be option B, where we have the two-tier cake, the double cake on the cake stand. All right? Because it says more. Let's look at question 40. The last question. A glue stick is four paper clips long. About how many paper clips long is the length of two glue sticks? So you just multiply the number by 2, 4 times 2 is 8. Or you can do repeated addition and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 paper clips form the length of 2 glue sticks. So that would be option C. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. Bye-bye, and I will see you in the next video.